Hey there, this is Mr. Wistar, and this is our lesson on insertion sort. We're going to talk about what insertion sort is and how it works, and then more importantly, we're going to talk about why it's more efficient than selection sort. Just to review, though, to kind of set the table again for this unit that we're working on, on sorting and searching, sorting means that we're going to take a collection of objects and we're going to arrange them in some meaningful order, either from largest to smallest or smallest to largest, whatever we're looking for in a particular situation. If we're grading out our algorithms, we want to try to find algorithms that are definitely effective, meaning that they reliably work every time, and that they're efficient, which means that they work as quickly as possible. And I think you'll see in this lesson that insertion sort is actually way more efficient than selection sort. If you want to think about how insertion sort works, the easiest analogy to think about is how you sort cards when you're playing card games. Most of you have probably played card games before, and when you get dealt a bunch of cards and you have to sort them, how do you usually do it? Well, usually what you do is you pick up all your cards, you take a card out of your hand, you pick it up, and then you put it back in place where it's supposed to go. You pick up the next card, put it in place. You pick up the next card, put it in place. All of those actions of picking up the cards and putting them in place, eventually you've put every card in the correct place, and then your hand is sorted. And that's how insertion sort works. What you do every time through the loop is you choose the next unsorted item. Remember that when we talk about sorting algorithms, we want to partition our um, array in our minds into two parts, the parts that are sorted and the parts that are unsorted. In insertion sort, you should start thinking about the items on the left side of the array as being sorted and the items on the right side of the array as being unsorted. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick out the first element in the right hand side and then we're going to put it in the correct place in the left hand side. And every time we do that the left hand side gets a little bit bigger until eventually it takes over the whole array and then your array is sorted. Just like selection sort, insertion sort requires loops and in fact just like selection sort it requires two nested loops. But you'll see that actually because of the way the loops are written insertion sort is going to run faster. So let's take a look at the pseudocode. Every sorting algorithm including insertion sort has the same two parameters. It's got an array of stuff and an integer telling you how many things are in that array. Also, just like selection sort, we're going to start on the outside with a for loop. In this case, we're going to actually start with index number one and go to the end of the array. Why are we starting with index number one? Well, you should think about the index for the outer loop as representing the item that we are taking out of the array with our hand in order to put in its correct place. And if you think about it, you don't have to take the first item out of the array in order to sort it with everything to the left of it, because there is nothing to the left of it. The first item in an array is automatically in the correct place when you start doing insertion sort. So what we really have to start out with is the second item, the item in uh, position 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that swap index, that'll be equal to the thing that we're taking out, and we're going to create two temporary variables. There's going to be idx, which is going to be used essentially to represent um, the position in the left part, the left hand part of the array where we're trying to put um, the thing we pulled out. And we're going to have a value called idxval, which is equal to the value that we pulled out. You should think about idxval as representing that card in your hand that you're waiting to put back in the correct place. The only thing about insertion sort that's really tricky is the fact that you know computers don't have hands, we can't just pull something out. What we're actually going to be doing is taking the items in our array and shifting them over to the right um, in order to make a hole where the element that we're trying to sort belongs. And that hole is going to come in one of, one of two places. It's either going to come at the very beginning of the array, if the thing that we pulled out is the smallest that we're trying to sort, or it's going to come somewhere in the middle of that left-hand side. It's going to come when we find the place where the thing we pulled out is bigger than everything to its left and smaller than everything to its right. That's the correct place for that item. And that's actually what the while loop that you're looking at there does. The while loop is going to run while two conditions are true. One is that our IDX is greater than zero. Remember, IDX represents the item in the array that we're looking at to compare to what we pulled out. And if that, so if that condition um, ever becomes false, then that means that IDX is equal to zero, 
which means that we reached the beginning of the array and everything that we looked at was already bigger, in which case the thing that we pulled out was the smallest thing in the array. In the second uh, condition in our while loop, the second condition says that we should keep going only if the item to the left of IDX is greater than the thing that we pulled out. Because the way that this uh, algorithm works inside our while loop is we're going to take a look at the item to the left of our counter, and if it's bigger, um, then we're going to move it over to the, to the right. Sorry, I forget everything's backwards when I'm shooting video. So that's what happens inside our while loop. When we say ARIDX gets ARIDX minus 1, we're taking that item in our array and we're shifting it over to the right. And then what we do is um, subtract 1 from our um, pointer, and that's going to move our pointer over further to the left. So again, what we're doing is we're sort of we're grabbing our data and we're moving it over because we're trying to make a hole. And eventually we will find the correct place when our loop quits to put the item back into our array that we took out. And that's what the last statement in our for loop says, ARIDX gets IDX val. We're taking that item that we pulled out of the array, we're taking that card that's in our hand, and we're sticking it back into the rest of the cards. Okay, if that sounds a little confusing, Try with playing cards. It'll make a lot more sense. Let's actually take a look using the debugger about how that would actually work. So here's my program. We're not going to take a look at the code because we just looked at the algorithm and we know how it works. Um, but we are going to run it through the debugger step by step. So here's my array. It's going to be sorted. Pay attention to my local variables. They match exactly the what you just saw in your pseudocode. So we have swap IDX, which remember represents the position of the thing that we pulled out of the array. We have IDX, which represents the position of the item that we're going to compare to the thing we pulled out. And we have IDX val, which represents the thing that we pulled out. So in this case, swap IDX is equal to 1, um, and IDX val is equal to 6. So we're starting with 6. We're going to compare it each time through the while loop. Remember, we're going to compare it to IDX minus 1. So in this case, we're going to compare it to 4. Well, it turns out, relative to the left-hand side of our array, 6 is already in the correct place, because it comes after 4. So there's nothing to do here with this time through the for loop. Let's see what happens the next time through the for loop, though. This time, swap index is 2, idx is 2, and idx val is 2. That's the number 2. We're swapping this 2. Well, if you take a look at it, this has to, get, this has to come before the 6, and it also has to come before the 4. So inside our while loop, what we're going to have, what's going to happen is we're actually going to copy the six over one position to the right. Then we're going to copy the four over one position to the right. And then, remember that first condition in our while loop, idx greater than zero. Well, it just became false, which means our while loop is about to quit because we reached the beginning of our array. And now we're going to stick two back in its proper place. Notice that's the f that's an example of the first type of our loop actually quitting. All right, let's try again with three. Now swap index is three, idx is three, idx val is three. Wow, it's a tough coincidence. I didn't plan it this way. All right, take a look with your eyes about what you should expect to happen. The three has to go in between the two and the four, which means we have to move the six over and we have to move the four over, but not the two. So let's see how that works. So we're going to copy the six over. We're going to copy the four over. Now when idx gets to one, the second condition in our while loop actually becomes false because I, uh, AR bracket 0 is not greater than IDX val. And so now we put the 3 back in that spot. Okay, moving on, we're going to swap the 7. Again, the 7's in its correct place, so there's nothing to do. How about with, the, with swap index 5? That's the 1. Well, take a look at the array. If you compare it, again, we're comparing it to the left half of our array. Where does it have to go? Well, again, it has to go all the way back at the beginning. So the 7, the 6, the 4, the 3, and the 2 are all going to move over to make room for number 1. Sorting the 8, nothing has to happen. Sorting the 5, 5 is one of those examples of one of those elements that has to go in the middle of the left-hand part. So we have to move the 8 over, and the 7 over, and the 6 over, but not the 4. We're going to put the 5 in after the 4. Now the 9 is sorted. Now the 10 is sorted, and hooray, our index, uh, our algorithm is done. So remember, insertion sort is just like sorting playing cards. That's the best way to think about it. 
All right, let's talk a little bit about efficiency. Believe it or not, insertion sort actually runs a lot faster than selection sort. And there's a couple of reasons why. The biggest and most important reason is that that inside loop, that while loop, is going to quit as soon as it finds the right place for that element. Unlike selection sort, which has an inner loop that runs the same number of times regardless of what the data looks like, insertion sort quits prematurely most of the time. And so that while loop runs a lot less than the inside for loop in selection sort does. Also, um, depending on how your array is set up, a lot of times you really don't have a lot of work to do. I mean, if you think of an array with, um, you know, say three elements out of place, um, if your item is already in the correct place in the array, then insertion sort doesn't have any work to do. Um, and that, uh, that run through the for loop just quits. My dogs are being annoying right now. Okay, so that's why insertion sort runs faster than selection sort. And if you don't believe me, do the extension in the lab and you'll prove it to yourself. The question, uh, the other question that I want you to just think about when we talk about efficiency for insertion sort is what's the worst case? Remember with selection sort we said it really doesn't matter. Selection sort is equally bad no matter what kind of data you give it. Well that's not true with insertion sort. In insertion sort the worst case is when the array is sorted in re reverse order because that means that every single item has to be moved as far left as possible and that's going to require the maximum number of comparisons and the maximum number of swaps. Okay just looking back at insertion sort. Just to recap in this lesson, we talked about insertion sort, which is a more efficient way of sorting than selection sort because it only moves the data as far as it needs to and the loops don't have to run as many times as they do in selection sort. Remember that insertion sort works by saving an item in the array to a temporary variable and then moving everything to its left over to the right that's bigger than, it, uh, than the item that you pulled out. And then you stick that item that you pulled out back into the place in the uh, sorted part of the array where it should go. And that's why it's called insertion sort. All right, you're all set.